It's that time of the week. Yes, this week's cult movie show. Your weekly look at cult movies. Please welcome your hosts, Warren and Velvet. Yes! Welcome to another <laughs> podcast of the Cult Movie Show with uh, myself, Warren, and as always, the hostess with the mostest, Velvet. How are you today, Velvet? We've lost Velvet. Oh, we <laughs> no, yeah, no. lost Velvet. No, I, oh. for some reason, I muted myself, and I don't know why I did that. Sorry about that. I was talking, and they're like, where's Velvet? And I'm like, wow, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, I'm doing good now that you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. And we, of course, do have two um, very special guests back again, um, um, Irish and Tim Stewart. How are you guys? Yay. Hi, we're doing great, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, doing wonderful. Glad to be back. Yeah. Yay. Oh, We're glad to have you back. <laughs> ab- absol- ab- absolutely. And uh, I should actually ask the question uh, because uh, I believe you've been out somewhere rather special today. Um, I have, actually. I was out at the March for Our Lives in Orlando, um, mm. and I it, there were so many people out there. I, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if there were maybe 10,000 people out there at least wow. today. Wow. Yeah. We had a really great march, and it was really great to see all the kids out there really making their voices heard. It, I've been really just amazingly blown away by how articulate they are, and um, it was it was an experience. So I was really glad to get out there. Oh, that's fantastic! Were, were you? Uh, did you guys go to the women's march? I actually wasn't able to get out there then. So, and Tim usually works too much. So. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 um, he didn't get to go to either of those, unfortunately. But um, yeah, no, I didn't get to go to that. But um, this time, I made a real big point of it. My son really wanted to go, and uh, my niece wanted to go, and so we went kind of as a family um, with my mother and um, my my sister and my and the kids. And so it was a good experience for them, and um, I was very impressed. The whole turnout. Oh, that's fantastic! Well, I heard Washington officially hit a million people. I didn't hear quite that much. I was hearing about 800,000, but man, that it's possible, and I wouldn't be surprised looking at the pictures. I mean, it, it was amazing. I, I mean, it was I, really I, I, I'm going off Australian news, so... You yeah, know, well, I, you never know. I mean, it could be that much. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's Well, we, we, of course, Australians are sitting back in bemusement, I suppose, would be the best um, uh, way to view the whole thing. It's a little bit like... So you guys are now just attempting to fix a problem that we solved 22 years ago. So years it's, ago. Yeah, years ago. That's not <laughs> yeah. days or mm-hmm. months. That's years. So it's um, – it's, mm-hmm. um, uh, and that's, uh, this is not me having to go at anybody or anything like that, but it is interesting as a foreigner to sit back and watch – just put it that way. Definitely. You know. Definitely. And it inspires a lot of discussion, so we don't want to get into it here. We won't have no. time for the movies. No. <laughs> I'll just say, Warren, you guys call us Yanks for a good reason, okay? Uh, okay. No, remember we're septics. <laughs> oh, yeah, septics. That's right. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sorry, Septics. Yeah, you're right. I messed that up completely. Well, the, <laughs> the, the, yeah, Yank is the friendly term. Septic is the yeah. derogatory <laughs> term. Oh, oh, did I just curse? I didn't mean to do that. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, 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 I'm, a, I'm an Australian. We put swear words in our dictionary. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's so much more appropriate, though. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh. I mean, especially these days, and that's all I'll say about that. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Well, well said, well, well said. Yes, well, we are here, of course, to talk about cult movies, and um, we have got some great ones. Um, well, <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll, I'll use that in a very loose great with list. Air quotes. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> And uh, um, actually, just very quickly before we do, is there, have you, um, how is uh, Legion of Rue going, actually, just very quickly? Um, well, really should ask. We've been on hiatus for a while. Right. <laughs> My director has been off in, now he's off in Asia right now shooting something, and he did a bunch of stuff with Disney. So we've been kind of behind the times, but we're just getting back into getting some scheduling going again. So I'm hoping we can get finished pretty soon. <laughs> 
Because I'll yeah. tell you what, I'm either going to be in the insane asylum or in the um, in a nursing home, home yeah. before this is over. But, um, Aww. Yeah, but, there's so know. many moving parts to getting these projects off the ground, as you well know. And it's yeah. interesting to see that side of it because, you know, we always see the finished product and it's easy for us to criticize. <laughs> as we're getting ready to do with the movies we're doing today. Yeah. But, uh, Believe me, yeah. I, I'm one of those people that like to sit back and criticize. And I have more than a few things to say about having to wait this long. But. <laughs> I'm trying to be patient because honestly I have the best director and the best DP and the best crew that you can possibly imagine and they're really awesome. worth it for. So awesome. You know, yeah. I uh, so I'm I'm really excited for you guys to see what we have when we can't wait. Oh, yeah, yes, I'm, I'm excited. Thanks for asking. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, I'm I'm seriously excited. I I I I Yeah, I me too. Wait. I absolutely can't wait. Um, all right, so look, we're going to talk about two films uh, this podcast. It'll be a little bit shorter than uh, than usual. Um, but and we have a mini movie, but we're going to postpone that for next week. We can blame it on me because of scheduling conflicts. I'm very busy and important. And yes. <laughs> so, yes, you're, so. you're out there dealing with Bigfoot, aren't you? <laughs> How'd you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> got to keep the population down. It's a dirty, hairy job, but somebody's got to do it, and nobody and believes me. So that what, makes it very difficult. And, and now that so. you've gone all eco and electric, you've got to use an electric. <laughs> was it an electric prod? <laughs> Exactly. I just got to prod the car to get it started. It's all good. (laughs) (laughs) All right, cool. All right. So the first film we are going to have a bit of a chat about um, is from 1972 from the director, um, was it Lee Frost? And um, (laughs) what can we say? It is called The Thing with Two Heads. Um, and it is uh, shot in colour. It's a wonderful little B-grade offering, um, I, I, I suppose uh, we should say. Uh, but amazingly, actually stars Ray Milland. Now, I've no idea how they conned him into doing this. Um, maybe... <laughs> He just needed the money at the time. I really don't know sort of financially where Ray Milland was in 1972. But, I mean, he was a huge movie star. I really don't know how he... uh, Anyway, and uh, and it's not even really... (laughs) Even though he gets top billing, it's not really the lead role, which is interesting. But we'll get to that in just a minute. So, look. Basically, what is this story all about? And um, so... Um, here we go. So um, it starts, um, uh, well, basically the story is about a uh, famous doctor uh, who is a transplant surgeon uh, called Maxwell uh, Kirshner, I think his name is meant to be, and he's been experimenting with transplants for a long time. But it turns out that he is dying, and he has started to do work on transplanting a head. Yes, taking a head from one person's body and putting it onto another's. And this is a way that he sees himself being able to stay alive by putting his head onto a viable other host body. So he experiments with a gorilla, um, to see if it will work, and it it does <laughs> basically. And so then they, um, uh, we'll get into the details in just a minute. So then they need to find a person, and um, so of course they then go to the I, I think it's meant to be the governor of whatever state they're in, and they ask for a person who's on death row to volunteer their body to do this. So anyway, they do find uh, somebody. Uh, who will volunteer to do this because he believes that he can clear his name in 30 days and it will take 30 days for the procedure to actually take place. So he hopes that he can clear his name and he won't be executed. So he thinks it's a pretty good deal. Um, The problem is that our good doctor is an incredible racist. And the problem is that the person that they choose just happens to be an African-American. And so you can see where the problem will start when we've got a racist's head attached to the body of an African-American man who still has his head attached (laughs) because they have to run around with two heads for 30 days until (laughs) the new head takes over and they can remove the old head. Now I'll yeah. get into I'll get into how the hell the spinal column works in this in just a moment, but that's that's <laughs> we'll get into that in a second. 
So anyway, so what happens is that um, our, uh, our our poor person that's had Ray Milan's head attached to him decides that he's not going to put up with this and he escapes. And so the whole entire movie is basically about the, them, the two of them, if you like, in one body running around being chased by the police for an hour and 20 minutes. And that is pretty much our movie until the very end where they decide that they will do the transplant, but it won't work in the good doctor's favour. Um, so, oh, what did everybody think of the thing with two heads? I'll take a break. Irish, Tim, your thoughts? <laughs> Well, first of all, the fact that the the convict was played by Rosie Greer, who was a, a you know big time football player here in the U.S., not football, <laughs> the American football. So, <laughs> oh, that thing, that girl sport. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He really did an admirable job with it for yeah. the type of movie that it was. I was yeah. relatively impressed with his performance. <laughs> I was too. I was too. The acting was actually quite strong for how goofy this movie was. And, 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 and honestly, I was pretty impressed overall with the head on the shoulder effects. The fake head <laughs> was, pretty, was pretty good, especially <sighs> where they were on the dirt bikes. Oh, that, my yes. I was thinking, how are they, you know, there's got this Rosie Greer in the front. They got this old white dude behind him, pressed up against him, another dude behind him. him? Just <laughs> trying to oh. just put her bike. Uh, yeah, I'm just shocked. Okay, like, I guess both of these actors, when they heard the script, they thought this was really going to be some cutting edge, like, special effects. You know, you got a two-headed guy, and you're going to have to kill one. So, so the other can take over the body like it, it, I'm sure but then they do this fucking movie and they have to spend like a good chunk of it with their faces squished up against each other I know, I was like, I know. they must have been so fucking miserable and humiliated <laughs> just like can't get out of this contract and I do it or I get sued stuck now but my even though that was bad it still made me laugh when you would see the fake foam rubber head <laughs> whenever it, <laughs> and I was just like, wow. Um, uh, oh, yeah. It just. And the nice racial over undertones, the nice irony that the racist has his white head attached to a black body. But, okay. Okay. This movie is a time capsule because I love that they have all the 70s slang. They didn't go too deep with the slang in this, but the poster. Have you guys seen the poster for this movie from 1972? Yes. Oh, yes. let me read this out loud for you guys. Let me read this out loud for you. So let me just say this really quick. I'm a woman of color. So if anybody's offended by my use of language when I read this <laughs> poster, fuck off. I'm a woman of color. I'm allowed to, say it. I'm allowed to do it. So I, I'm, I'm taking my I'm taking my creative license here to do that. So we got here's the poster. They transplant a white bigot's head onto a soul brother's body. <laughs> Doctor blew it. The most fantastic medical experiment of the age. And now with the fights, the fuzz, and chicks and the chapters, man, they really in deep trouble. The thing with two heads. There you go. <laughs> How seventies well is that poster? <laughs> It's look the, the thing the thing the thing for me is it's 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 actually a really interesting. That was poster. amazing. I know. That was good. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's 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 a really amazing concept. You know the the whole idea of of you know it, it's and it's been done before. I mean, what was there? Wasn't there an Oscar winning movie with Tony Curtis and um um. Uh, oh, I've forgotten his name now, where they were two prisoners and they were handcuffed together. One was black, mm -hmm. one was white. Um, yes, uh, yes. Very I've famous forgotten film. the name. I know, um, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. The um, so the, the idea has been, it has been done before. I mean, even in a crappy British film like The Wild Geese, um, they <laughs> you know, a film about mercenaries. They actually um, did a thing where they had a white South African who had to be linked up with a black... African politician, um, and and so it's it, the idea is that by putting forcing people together, they start to understand each other's differences, uh, but they also start to understand every each other's similarities, and they become friends. You know, so it's meant right. to end right. racism. That's the thing, the thing about happening. this movie no. is it doesn't do no. that. <laughs> It basically ends with the bigot being just as racist as he was when it started. There's no, like, 
like they take a really good idea and go nowhere with it. <laughs> yes, that is so. You know, and that's exactly what happened too, because this does start off with actually a pretty decent premise. Yeah, it's totally far fetched. The science makes no sense. At the same time, this has happened in real life with dogs and monkeys. They have actually done this kind of thing where what they just put a dog's head on another dog, and oh wow, it's alive. Uh, yeah, it's, it's alive. pretty terrible. Have so, they, actually, I mean, they haven't actually done it with heads. I thought they've done it with limbs and ears. I didn't think they'd actually no, done there, it with no, heads. No, there's Russian, there's Russian science films of a dog with two heads. Oh yeah, but that's to. yeah, but that's I fake. Know. That's not that's not actually real. Oh, world. is it really? Yeah, no, that's oh, all fake. Yeah. You just wrecked my world. You it's just debunked not... it. Oh man, I thought that shit was real. I, they tricked me. No, they did. No, no, no app- apparently the Soviet Union did experiment with stuff like this, but it's but, but it, no, but it didn't work. They all died immediately. I mean, it's not like no. Oh. Oh, well, that, actually, I'm happy to hear that. that you I'm, mean they, I'm glad to know there aren't <laughs> being dogs being beheaded, and so there's one dog running around with two heads, and one dog's dead because its head's off. Okay, I'm happy to know that now. Yes, but you, you, you <laughs> actually achieved total spinal realignment, as they did in the movie. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the whole, the whole point is it's not just attaching the head and all the nerves and everything else in the room, but it's also that there's only one spine. I mean, I know. Uh, you put a splitter on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, it's like, it's, it's, it's like, and, 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 oh, the science is just so out there, but hey, it's fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> but no, so it does start with this pretty interesting concept, but then like, it's, like you said, it goes nowhere because then there is this humongous car chase where actually oh I guess they're on a, a motorbike, an electric motorbike and they're being chased by like 20 cop cars and for whatever reason all the cop cars keep crashing into each other, into trees driving off the road, crashing, turning random ravines everywhere yes, everywhere, I know. this goes on for like Arthur, 20 minutes, this is like a 20 minute scene, that's like a one third of the movie <laughs> it really went on forever <laughs> Forever. Wait, well, which when was the... they destroyed their entire police force? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, exactly. It's like they all there's a rape and murder movie. out tonight, but there's no police out because they all wrecked their cars chasing a two headed man on a motorbike. We, 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 we should just we should just explain that our two headed man uh, basically steals a, a a he goes to a motocross event um, where he, they they steal a motocross bike. And then, of course, the entire police force is chasing them through the countryside in their cars, and um, they can't seem to keep a car from not either going off a cliff or turning upside down for any more than a couple of seconds. Um, Obviously, this police force maybe needed some serious driver instruction, but... um, it's it's, uh, As you said, it's 20 minutes. But I was going to say, when did the Blues Brothers come out? Does anyone remember? That's a good question. Let me check for you. Keep talking and I'll find out the year for because you. Because I'm just wondering if one of the two... 1980. There you go. You go. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, I'm actually wondering if this film influenced the Blues Brothers. Possibly. Isn't that... Possibly. Um, because Wouldn't that be hilarious? The Blues Brothers may have influenced this film. <laughs> That's terrible. They, they traveled in time. In time. To, to influence exactly the... Right. So... so you know. And we forgot to mention the doctor. There is... Uh, so we also have a black doctor that he ends up being a hostage of the two-headed man. And both heads of the man are trying to convince the doctor, hey, cut off his head so I can use the body. So this poor guy is not only a hostage, he's around for this entire chase. So they have the two-headed man on the motorbike with the doctor hanging on the back. And I'm like, wow, this is an endless supply of gasoline to outrun like 20 cop cars that all crash. And they still keep on trucking on this little they fucking motorbike the with three people. bike race, like through all of the mud <laughs> traps. Yeah, the first place. It was first place. <laughs> but the other thing too is the doctor. The doctor is played by Don Marshall, because I, I, mm. um, who is passed away now. I, I was um, because I was looking and I thought I know that man. Like I know that actor, and I couldn't work out where it was from. But of course, he was very famous for a well, what was quite a big uh, TV show in the nineteen sixties called Land of the Giants. I don't know if anyone remembers it. 
I've, heard I've, of that, but I don't think I've ever seen I've seen it. a couple episodes. <laughs> yes, which was an Irwin Allen production, which gives you an idea wow. of what it was like. Um, and uh, and I, because I'm looking, I thought, I know him. I know him. And, yes, so because uh, he is a reasonably famous actor, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, no, interesting stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was. But my absolute favorite part of this movie was when the – uh, the white man, our you know, our rich racist surgeon whose head has been implanted on the the black convict who's on death row. Um, when he finally gains control of the body and he manages to knock out the other head with a punch. Yes. I thought that was great. That was my oh, no. favorite part. I thought that was so funny. I was like, wow. And <laughs> when he turned on him and then took over the body and started attacking his own face by like, <laughs> rubbing his hands all over the other guy's face. <laughs> <laughs> and he stayed knocked out for a long time now i was curious to see how this movie was going to end i was like and i for half a second i liked the ending and then i was dissatisfied by the ending you're like wait this is an unresolved ending is there supposed to be a sequel what the fuck because um about? they drove away singing spiritual <laughs> i know <laughs> leaving leaving oh, rain sorry, hand tied up to a machine <laughs> it says, find me another head. Oh, no, find me another body. <laughs> For the first time, all the African-Americans survived and they drove away singing spirituals. It was yes. Isn't that the truth? That is a very rare occurrence. You're right. I guess it was a happy ending. No, it was. But I, <laughs> it was and I don't think they were going to find a body for the racist doctor's head. No, so. I don't no. think so either. No. no, but my thing was because, okay, so um, – uh, what was his name? Uh, Jack. Jack. It was a nice, uh, <laughs> nice ambiguous name. You didn't know what he was going to look like until they unveiled the racist doctor is going to get attached to a black man. Mm-hmm. So Jack is on death row for a murder he did not commit. And so they're trying to track down the person who is his witness or who did it. And I was so I thought that's where this movie was going to go. I thought they were going to have this crazy thing of hunting this guy down and he has two heads. And yeah. then the white doctor is going to come <laughs> around. And I'm like, wow, damn, I should have wrote this fucking movie. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> I have this whole story worked out that did not happen in this movie. Well, did, <laughs> I should have wrote did, this. Did you, also, did you also notice that when, when they make their escape, they decide they have to go somewhere into hiding so the police don't find them, okay? So this man is on the run from the law. Every police officer is trying to find him. <laughs> so where do they go to hide? His girlfriend's apartment. Now, And it was really lazy writing one more time because they said, oh, well, they don't know where she lives. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> the police don't know where that, a convicted that's, that's felon's care that. girlfriend yeah, I lives. I was like, what? Yeah, it I was know. crazy. I was like, wow, okay. And, okay. and then he was suggesting that maybe she climb into bed with him and his racist head. I know. <laughs> and he'll, he said he'll cover the head with a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> but we even get a dick joke thrown in. Oh, did you, you did have you see two, that? Do you have two of anything yeah. else? Aye, aye, aye. I don't know if she could handle that much action. Come on, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> it's, it's um uh yes, I, I was just amazed that yes, um that this was the place that they went to hide. Um, but yeah, it's just oh my goodness, yes, and yeah, but you're, you're absolutely right. The fact that they don't seem to really put much effort into finding the real killer. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's just, yeah. Um, but there is some, there's some funny bits in it. Uh, you know, it's like when they go to the warehouse so they can, you know, find the drugs so they can try to remove the head. Um, uh, he says, uh, the doctor um, says to Jack, oh, did you bring your gun? And he said, oh, no, I forgot it. <laughs> you know, it's like... <laughs> He's not, and, he, and it turns out you realize this guy is not a criminal. He really was a yeah. victim of circumstance. Like, so you're feeling really sorry for him. And uh, uh, man, so why did the doctor want his head transplanted onto another man's body? Because he was dying of a terminal cancer. So that's what you do. You just go find an innocent man and tell him, okay, I'm going to put my head on your body, and once I'm grafted on, I'm going to go ahead and cut your head off. So, you know, thanks. Thank you for your donation to science. (laughs) Well, he said his genius must survive. So, you know, it didn't matter about that other person. His genius (laughs) was all that mattered. 
Hitchcock's <laughs> racist genius. <laughs> I would love to see a remake of this movie with the special effects we have now. They could really pull this off. <laughs> well, it, there's, there's another movie from the 1950s, I think, which is called Hitler's Head. Um, oh. which is which is where they cut Hitler's head off at the end of the war, and they keep it in oh, a no. jar, and they keep it in a jar, and it talks and everything, you know, like it, 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 all this oh, sort of stuff. No. And they're trying to find a body to attach Hitler's head to. Um, but like the, the movie, yeah, <laughs> I know, yes. But the movie doesn't actually work very well because apparently they ran out of money halfway through, so they oh, bought no. the, they bought oh. the rights to a second film and then just joined the two films together. So it doesn't. <laughs> I have heard of this. Yes. I have heard of this. So oh it doesn't God. work. Like, it doesn't really make you know a lot of sense. But the There's other- just, like, random shots of Hitler's head in it for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this- it's like, what? <laughs> but this, this movie has actually been parodied not once but twice <laughs> on The Simpsons, which is kind of a, 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 um, a you know a, a badge of honor. Um, it was it, it was parodied in Treehouse of Terror two, and then parodied oh. again in Treehouse of Terror fourteen. So it's actually been done <laughs> twice on The Simpsons. So to get parodied on parodied on The Simpsons, you know that you're kind of a bit special. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And and actually, the reason I actually picked this movie this week was actually two reasons. I saw it on a list of one of the worst movies ever made. And when I was like, oh, my God. OK, so two guys actually agreed to do a movie where they have to act with their faces squished together the entire time. This I've got to see. But then when I was mentioning this film to my mother, she was like, I saw that in the drive in when I was a little girl. That's a good movie. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Really? <laughs> she said it was a good movie so i am happy to say i did actually have her sit down and watch it with me this week and she was like wow this is really bad <laughs> <laughs> she goes i thought it was good when i was a kid but it's not is it like no <laughs> and she also complained that the race went way too long or not the race the chase the chase with the police went way too long and it's absolutely like, the best part of the movie to me <laughs> 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 but a, 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 another um, uh, person um, that um, uh, needs to be actually, I suppose, brought up is because uh, there's a a bit of a um, uh, Australian connection uh, to this um, movie, and that is uh, the girlfriend or the wife. Um, who, of course, we said was was it Leela Moss? I think it's meant to be her name, mm-hmm. Leela, um, mm-hmm. and um, she's played by Chelsea Brown. Now, mm-hmm. Chelsea Brown, American audiences probably say, oh, well, I've seen her in this. What, what else has she done? Um, well, she was a um, common uh, regular on Rowan and Martin's Laughing, I think, in the 1960s. Oh, yeah. but, what she okay. actually, but what she did was that she came out with, do you remember the show Hair? Or, of it, you know, the stage show Hair? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she came out to Australia in the 1960s with the American cast of Hair, to do performances all over the country. Well, at the time, she was pregnant. And um, and anyway, so after the show finished, she was rather heavily pregnant and couldn't actually fly back to the United States. So she had to give birth mm-hmm. to her daughter in Australia. Well, she did, and um, she still lives in Melbourne. She never moved back. Wow. Oh, cool. Um, and, cool. Uh, yeah, so Chelsea Brown actually doesn't live too far away from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's very so, cool. Yes, uh, and, I'm sad um, to say she passed away from pneumonia last year in March. So hang on, yeah. Chelsea, did she? Yeah. I didn't yes, know she died. Yeah, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I didn't want anybody to tweet us like, "You guys don't know your asshole from a hole in the ground." She's dead. Damn it, she died. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, she sorry. Did sorry to break it to you. Oh, oh hang on. Damn pneumonia. Um, <laughs> oh, and she moved back. And she died. Still lived near her. <laughs> oh, she died. Okay, so she di- actually died. Oh, she did too. And uh, I didn't realize she moved back to America to die. I didn't actually realize that. Oh, um, so sad. Wow. Wow. I'm I didn't. Oh, well. Sorry oh, about oh, that. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I did not realize. <laughs> that just goes to show you, I didn't realize Chelsea Brown had died. Um, oh, wow. I, I didn't know that. Um, but, uh, you know, don't feel too bad because most of the people that were in this movie are dead now. Right, okay. Um, okay. And some days we'll all be dead, so don't feel depressed. 
<laughs> this movie was a while ago, so a lot of these people have already passed away, so don't feel too bad. It's the, 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 the cycle of life. <laughs> But oh, that's what's dear. great is that they can be honored and remembered through these great movies. And I say great with air quotes that uh, they left behind. So it's great. You laugh, so there's something. Definitely. <laughs> you know, apart from the car with the police, I truly enjoyed the gorilla when he escaped from the, uh, from the hospital and literally ran through the town that had nobody in it. Up and yes. Nobody noticed. Yeah, he even went into a store and scared people. Nobody noticed the, the two-headed was... gorilla. It was a two-headed gorilla, people. <laughs> Let me just say, I had I have to mention, too, how annoyed I was at the fact that they got this gorilla out of its cage by putting a very heavy metal cage right on top of a gurney and balancing it. <laughs> 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 and then putting the gorilla in it and then sticking a needle in its ass and thinking, <laughs> hold on to the cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that looked kind of flimsy. I was trying to figure that out too. And then all of a sudden, like, then he takes it, like, starts hauling ass with his two gorilla heads because he was the test subject. And all of a sudden, they have a tranquilizer gun. And I'm like, wait, why didn't you tranquilize him before you gave him the fucking injection? I was like, does that not medically work? Or am I like, oh, well, yes. I mean. <laughs> Oh, yes. Um, so we, we're going to try to find faults with this film because, I mean, I can't see any faults. There's definitely no medical faults in this film. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> remember, remember, Russian dog heads. Remember, this yes. is the real thing. So. <laughs> on the internet, it must be real. Oh, it must that's be ins- real. I saw a video on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. I, I get all my news now from Cambridge Analytica. I don't get it from anywhere else. <laughs> oh, too soon. Oh, no, too kidding. soon. No, that perfect timing. Uh, perfect timing. No, perfect timing. Perfect timing. Oh, my goodness. No, this was actually, like, it, this movie, I was a little bored with the chase scene because for me that went a little too long. But honestly, the rest of the time I was really entertained because I was just dying to know how this movie was going to end. And yeah, <laughs> I was so surprised by the end with all those ravines. <laughs> <laughs> so would, would, would it, is it fair to say that this falls into the category of blatsploitation? Mm, I don't think, it, I don't think so. Or what do you guys think? I, you know, it, it edges, it edges there a little at the end, I think, right, but right. I don't yeah. think overall, that it is. Well, it's no Blackula, but... <laughs> no, but what oh, is? But what is? No You're right. Yeah, nothing is Blackula. Blackula. Oh, which we also need to do someday. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, it's, definitely. It's, it's no, well, nothing is as bad as... Um, there was a Dracula movie made with, you know, Sir David Niven, and who played... It mm-hmm. uh, was a British film. He, he played Count Dracula, and he goes out one night, and he drinks the blood of a whole heap of different people, and uh, he wakes up in the morning, and he's black. Okay, this is not this is not a joke. So they have to track down the black woman that he drank the blood from, so he can turn white. I'm not kidding you. That is a real oh, film. Oh wow! And it was made with David Niven. Oh, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's um, just... <laughs> oh, that almost killed me. That was great. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I like lost my breath laughing. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. dear me. So, oh. oh my goodness. So I suppose have we got much else to say about the the thing with two heads? I mean, did anyone find it change their lives or, <laughs> or any such thing? Okay. Okay, this is just a fun fact very really quick. We, uh, the, the two-headed gorilla was actually played by Rick Baker, who is a famous special special effects make, makeup artist. So I'm pretty sure he's the one that created our gorilla and the rubber heads and all that fun stuff. And he actually had an acting role as the two-headed gorilla <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> and you've got to love a two-headed gorilla. You know, Absolutely. Especially when it escapes. That, one, uh, that was sad because then they cut off the other one's head. And anyways, I'm like, poor rubber suit gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other, thing, the other thing too is that Ray Milan says, says to the other scientists, um, 
it, it, when they've got the two-headed gorilla in a cage, and it, it's a little bit like he says, oh, don't worry, the gorilla trusts me. He knows that I'm trying to help <laughs> yes. him. And it's like, how the hell would a gorilla understand the concepts of complex microsurgery? It's just... <laughs> I mean, is this Planet of the Apes? Was it, was it, the trust? I mean, I was just going to say, was this Dr. Zayas that he was experimenting on? No, he was a bigot. A bigot of the highest caliber. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my goodness. Gracious. Ah, which, which, do- well, actually, well, which, well, Dr. Zayas was a bigot himself. Actually, if oh, we were because oh, yeah, because remember it was all about you know human lives don't matter. It's all was all about uh, only ape lives matter. So matter. Right. I'm sorry when you yeah. said ape lives matter, I just had to laugh. I'm sorry, that just sounded funny. Okay, oh, right. I'm not going to say anything ape else. I'm not going to say anything else. I'll just leave it at that. Sorry, you you, you mean you mean you didn't go to the ape lives matter march? <laughs> <laughs> I was there. I had my placard. <laughs> Roddy McDowell was there with me. Well, but then all the gorillas come out and the chimpanzees and orangutans, and it just becomes this whole big mess, and they all want their hashtag, and yikes, okay. So Actually, that's, actually I that's, not, that's, not as crazy, that's not as crazy as it sounds. In Planet of the Apes Part 4, <laughs> there is an Ape Lives Matter movement actually led by exactly. Cornelius. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, and they actually is. march down the streets of Los Angeles they with did. their placards. <laughs> They do. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> wow, that movie is so ahead of its time in so many ways. It's, oh it's an amazing oh. um, allegory of human society. Uh, in eight form. You did do a whole it's show amazing. just on the original uh, five. Was it five? Yeah, five. Oh. Definitely. Of the but you're yeah, a huge yes. fan of the new ones, though, aren't you, Velvet? Oh, I love. I mean, I love the originals too, but I love what they did with the remake. They really took it to a new level, and they didn't go the B-movie route. They really amped up the special effects with each film, and they really made you care about these characters and just just the depth of character and the actual story that they told. Of course, it's still you know beyond belief. It's beyond... <laughs> you have to suspend your disbelief, but I really love what they did with the most recent trilogy. Like, There's no need to remake it at all. Like, They finished it, tied it up with a neat bow. I mean, if they want to stop there and never make another one, that's they really did it justice. Love it. So, with you on that. So do you reckon yeah. there will never be another Planet of the Apes? Because I oh, of course there will, because that shit makes money. I'll be uh, yeah. I'll be there yeah. opening night. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they will I, always rehash every idea until you just want to yeah. kill yourself. Besides, That's just right. the Aside from wonderful right. movies like The Thing with Two Heads, there are seven ideas in Hollywood, mm-hmm. and they're going to keep rehashing it over and over again. Yes, <laughs> there's only seven stories. <laughs> well, it was, it's, it's, like, it's like that line from Hong Kong that basically, to make a movie in Hong Kong, it must have either police, criminals, um, ghosts, um, martial arts, and there's one other. And as long as it has those five elements, the movie will rate. Hmm. Like that's it's it's just a, a rule they sort of work to yeah so simple formula Love yeah it. simple you formula know, you know but uh, it's, it's all a formula <laughs> <laughs> and you think you keep saying you know people think oh well, I want something that's different from the formula and every time somebody strays from the formula it doesn't work. Because that's people true. actually mm. want the formula. Right. <laughs> well, that's, right. that's, well right. although that's actually very interesting because if you look at, um, let's say, like the James Bond franchise, well, when they went to Casino Royale, and I'm, I'm talking about the Daniel Craig one, not the David Niven one from mm. the 1960s, yeah. um, when, which was a comedy, <laughs> obviously, um, not part of the Broccoli group, um, when they actually did Casino Royale, <laughs> they did um, break the formula. Like they actually mm. rewrote the formula but it worked. The ratings went up, not down. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you can get away with it here and there, change a little thing here, a little thing there. But for the most part, if you try to completely stray from it, people will call you out. Yeah. It just, it, it just happens. It's right. the fanboys and fangirls <laughs> that do yes. it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's true. But then it, I suppose if you've got a base, you'll keep, you know, mm-hmm. whatever that base is, as long as that base is big enough, you're going to keep producing movies. Oh, because- I agree with that. You can expand the base by tweaking the formula, but you can never stray too far from it. Yes, I, I think mm-hmm. that's, yeah, yeah. I think that's, um, I think that's pretty accurate. Because the other thing too is if you look at James Bond, when you look at the latest movie, 
Uh, well, actually, both Skyfall and um, the, the the last one, I've forgotten its name now, um, oh. they sort of go back to the formula a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, they've sort of sort of said, all right, yeah, no, but we will go back to some of that original formula, you know, sort of thing. So, yeah, no, no, I think you're absolutely right, Irish. I think you're absolutely right. So, anyway, we were talking about the thing with two heads, not um, Planet of the Apes and James Bond. <laughs> but, hey, David Niven came up again, so... Oh, he did twice. <laughs> we mentioned David, Sir David Niven twice. <laughs> it, is, it is Sir David, I think. He, yeah, it was Sir David, I think, You're yeah. probably right, yeah. Um, but, uh, so, anyway, I suppose we should sum up and uh, rate uh, the thing with two heads. So um, if we do the rounds of everybody on the Eric Roberts scale of B movies, um, one, well, zero being absolutely what they're probably (laughs) worth and five being absolutely (laughs) wonderful, um, where does everybody sit? Irish, Tim, go ahead and set us up. What do you guys think? Oh, my gosh. What was the scale again? Five is good, so strong, strong five. Strong club. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Out. Absolutely <laughs> entertained the heck out of me. Again, for the gorilla walking through a, 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 an abandoned town into a supermarket that's absolutely packed to the car chases that last over 20 minutes with every police car in a ditch, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you say it like that, it does sound pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, and Irish, what, what were your uh-huh. thoughts? I'm not going to be quite as generous, but I would give it a four. I mean, I did enjoy it immensely. I laughed my ass off. At that. Um, I, you know, again, I really enjoyed seeing Rosie Greer with his face smashed up against an old white racist dude for most yes. of the film. So, I mean, and, and again, the way it ended, I was I was really pleased to see everybody so happy and, and the racist <laughs> head just there on the table saying, Philip. Please get me another body. It was perfect. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I'm going to go with a four. The pop quiz value was one bucket. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, on Eric Roberts' scale, one to five. Um, I'm not going to rate it as high because, for me, like I said, the, the, the chase scene was just a little too long for me. I was getting bored. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, they're literally just filming cars driving around and crashing. I was like, there's no way they can not catch this guy on a motor scooter with three pe- or two and a half people on, on or two, yeah what would that be two and a half people anyways um so <laughs> yes i have a possible five eric roberts i'm gonna give this two and a half because oh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> two and a half whoa. yeah two and a half because i was getting bored, bored and that ending fucked me up because i'm like wait are they really just all bumping and grinding driving away in a car singing a song i'm like wait i thought you guys were gonna go find his killer and wait this is a doctor this was a surgeon driving. Now he's going to give up his career as a surgeon to be on the run with a convicted <laughs> runaway death row killer, even though he didn't really do it. I'm like, I, I was just, I was so conflicted by that ending. It fucked it up for me. So two and a half. I okay, feel very he, strongly about it. I can tell. <laughs> he has morals, Velvet. He has morals. He's prepared to take a moral stand, you know. Um, Evidently. Know. But, um, <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> Well, uh, for me, I remember. I'm so unrealistic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, look, I think as a, as a piece of movie making, I'll, look, I'll give it about two out of five Eric's. But as far as. Oh, but, 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 but. No, no, no. My, 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 my score is never that simple, guys. It's never that simple. Um, but as, <laughs> but as, as a piece of B grade cinema, I'm going to give it four and a half. Because it's <laughs> it's so much fun. It, it it I mean, yeah, the car chase is ludicrously long, but the rest and of the movie is great. Yes, but the, <laughs> but the movie is actually really fun. I, I didn't get bored at all. Like it was really oh. fun. And and in the end, I actually really wanted to see what happened. You know, <laughs> I really wanted to see what happened. So uh, so I'm, I'm going to give it four and a half. <laughs> oh, good stuff all right okay well we're going to uh take a quick musical break and uh, then we will be right back with our uh final film of the podcast so we'll be right back i 
special mommy band played And the children drank lemonade And the morning lasted all day And through an open window came Like Sinatra in a younger day Pushing the town away Said in winter 1963, it felt like the world would freeze with John F. Kennedy and the Beatles. And we are back. And uh, that was, of course, Dream Academy uh, with Life in a Northern Town. Uh, yes, very 1980s, because we are, although a totally different country, but we are going to talk about a <laughs> film from the 1980s. Um, and this one, not set in um, Yorkshire in the 1960s, but set in New York in the 1980s. And we are talking about The Last Dragon. And um, I had heard lots about this film, and you know, I'd never actually seen it until this week. Um, and I was in for a surprise, put it that way. I was, <laughs> I, I was, I was in for a surprise. So anyway, to give everyone just a very quick rundown, um, the story is about a uh, young man uh, called uh, Leroy Green, who is a um, 
uh, aficionado of the martial arts and, uh, of course, worships his god, who is, of course, um, Bruce Lee. And uh, he has been trained by his master. And uh, But before we go on any further, you might sort of think, oh, OK, it's an Asian martial arts film. No, Leroy Green <laughs> is no. black. He is an African American, and most of the cast are also African American. Pretty much all the martial artist people are African American. So it's, it's a really interesting film. Um, now he's sent off by his master to try to find the great master, who will then basically give him spiritual awakening. So he goes off on his search in New York. Now, in the meantime. There is the hottest VJ, I suppose. VJ? Yeah, VJ? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. In New York, yeah. who is called Laura <laughs> Charles. And anyway, we then have our a baddie, um, who is... Um, I've forgotten the name of the baddie now. Um, Show enough. Show Oh, Show Nuff. Oh, that's right. Oh, no, well, there's two, two baddies. baddies. There's yeah. Show yeah, got- um, Yes, who have, he was known as the Shogun of Harlem. And uh, he thinks that he's the greatest martial artist that has ever lived. Um, and then we have another baddie who is a music producer who tries to use various different... Eddie Arcadian. Eri, Eri, oh. Eddie Arcadian, who tries to then um, use whatever means, whether it be kidnapping or threats of violence or taking over the entire studio, to try to force um, La- um Lara Charles to actually play the music that he is producing. Um, in the meantime, Leroy will um, get caught up in all of this, and a giant battle will basically happen between all of them while these two plots are running simultaneously until Leroy can find out who his true master is. And of course, he will not find what he is expecting because his true master is somewhat closer to home than he expected. So that's a very, very brief rundown um, of this movie. Um, it's, it's a weird one. I don't know if it's, if it's a musical. I don't know if it's a martial <laughs> arts film. I don't know if it's a dark comedy. I don't really know what the fuck it is, to be honest, but it's a really interesting film. Um, what did everybody think? It was Irish, Tim. <laughs> it was essentially, to me, it was kind of like an ad 80s video that was, you know, stretched out into a hour and a half, two hour format. It really was. It was uh, yeah, it was a film it really was <laughs> video from Motown Pictures. I mean, how many times did they interrupt the storyline to show us two or three minutes of different video clips from things that were popular at the time? I mean, it was pretty fantastic. Yeah, I got to see DeBarge again. Yeah, yeah DeBarge. I mean, come on. <laughs> how often do you get to see that? I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have to agree with you completely. I think I even wrote my notes at one point. This is a, yeah, lots of great music videos. <laughs> lots of great music videos and from artists that you've heard of and have never heard of and you will never see again. Um, never. But, <laughs> but we also forget that this was bankrolled by Barry Gordy. And they say that he would actually show up on set quite often to check out how production was going. And he would bring an entourage of Motown stars with them. And also the whole um, dance area. And we forgot to mention Vanity. Vanity is our Laura Charles. She was a popular pop singer at the time. So she has a main starring role in this film. So she has her whole VJ set up. It's kind of like, you know, a live dance show, but she's showing music videos and it's local programming. Um, Diana Ross. Yes, the Diana Ross, Miss mm-hmm. Diana Ross, actually swung by and saw this set and purchased it to use on her next tour. <laughs> so, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yes, yes, a lot of great stuff happening here. But, oh, yeah. One, one, you know, one, I, I, oh, okay. no, 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 go on, Irish. No, I was just going to say it was um, cool for me because I have a connection to this film in a way because I worked with Ty Mock, the guy playing Leroy Green, the lead character on this, on cool. this 
uh, WMAC Masters that I did. He was on the second season. Um, he came in as a new character that was called Striking Eagle. And so he played a Native American character, which worked for him because he's actually half African American and half Italian. So even yeah. though he's no, not African American at all, but he was able to play the character. And he was a really, really nice guy. You know, it was it was interesting to work with him. He's very quiet and, and kind of kept to himself, but he was very, very nice, but very serious about everything that he did. So, you know, it was interesting for me and I because I actually hadn't seen this movie. I just knew he was in it. So it was interesting to me to actually see him playing this role of this very innocent character. <laughs> I <laughs> love his air of innocence in this film. He yeah. wasn't like this tough and hardened totally enlightened martial arts fighter. He was just really kind of a boy that was obsessed with Bruce Lee and, you know, practicing his martial arts. Yeah, by yeah. his master. Uh, yeah, that was kind of weird. I'm Far like, younger than his little brother. His little brother was like, I was like, what is going on with this kid? <laughs> his little brother kept giving him sex advice. And we're talking like little kid people. Like, how old was he? 10 years old? 11? Maybe 10, 11, yeah. 12. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept giving his like older brother sex advice, and you're just like, uh, wait, what? I was really <laughs> creeped out by him. <laughs> what? <laughs> What are you talking about, little boy? <laughs> well, I, I, I still think though there was another child in this movie who stole the film, personally, and I'm not <laughs> too sure the name of the actor, but it's the little Asian kid who, oh, yeah. in the end oh, of the yeah. film, turns into a kung fu fighter. And my God, he was brilliant. He was so That was very good. well choreographed. That was good. I mean, you guys have to see this to believe this. We're not doing it justice with this review. Yes, this young little boy, again, also in the age range, maybe 10 to 11, mm -hmm. very young, and full on kicking the bad guy's ass, doing <laughs> kicks and flips and just amazing ball busting. Just amazing. I was like, wow. <laughs> You and have to see it to believe it. <laughs> and did you notice who also made a very small appearance in this movie? William H. Macy. Yes. yes. And, and, Chaz, and Chaz Palmateri was the chauffeur that hijacked her ride. At yes. <laughs> yeah, so some big-ass names just kind of pop in for a second, like, Haha, we're not famous yet. Yes, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> William H. Macy was actually listed as W.H. Macy on the <laughs> <laughs> And he, and he was a handsome young man. What the fuck happened? So, no, no I, lo I do love William H. Macy. I actually met him in person at an airport one time. Not, not intentionally. He was just happened to be there, and I gasped like a freak. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah, I did the whole fangirl thing. And he's like, oh, how sweet. And you could th then he's just like, okay, now piss off. And he, didn't say that. <laughs> he didn't say that, but he was very polite. But uh, got that line, right? <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. So what the fuck is going on with show Nuff? That was a strange character. This whole movie is strange because first off, like the first 37 minutes, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm 37 minutes in and almost nothing has happened. We know that <laughs> Bruce Leroy, that is one of the names he goes by in this movie. I thought that was a joke, but yes, he's actually called Bruce Leroy sometimes in this movie is just, yeah, trying to find his master who happens to live in New York, and he has a medal from Bruce Lee. Wait, what? So, conveniently, everything's located in New York City, as is often in movies. But yes. then, 37 minutes later, there's a lot of music videos, a lot of dancing, and... Yeah, and Leroy dresses the entire time like he's in like 19th century Shanghai. Yeah, that oh was my god. favorite part with the hat. And everything. Oh, not the hat! Oh my god, the hat! <laughs> and 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 did you notice too that Vanity also, as soon as she meets him, suddenly starts wearing Chinese clothes? Yes. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Kimono. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's, Sorry, it's like it's, excuse me. <laughs> yes, it, it, it's like the minute, yeah. Um, and, and the other thing too is that um, uh, the uh, – and, and also the whole idea of um, – the idea is, is the Shogun of Harlem, right? And they've all got, <laughs> and they've all got little Shogun. rising suns on them and things like that. But I thought this was meant to be Chinese. I did but too. They're all, but they're I all dressed the – How silly of you, Warren. But they're all dressed as Japanese. <laughs> 
Look, now, I thought when the movie started, it was taking place in, like, you know, an Asian country. Because he's like, and I thought, oh, okay, he's gone to a foreign country to get his martial arts training from his master. <laughs> and his master's like, oh, no, I've taken you as far as you can go. I'm not your master anymore. And then he leaves and walks down the street, and it's fucking New York. And I'm <laughs> like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But before I realized that, they showed, they even showed two Chinese Sharpay, the dogs. <laughs> yes. And I was like, oh, they're in China. And then all of a sudden it's New York. And I'm like, oh, no, China they're town. not. <laughs> China town. Well, it's, 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 it's a bit like in the, the movie, the, I'm not talking about the TV series, but the original movie MASH, right, which came out in the 1970s, there's yeah. a scene in that where they actually go on, um, what do they call it? You guys, we call it leave. I think you guys call it R&R or something, right? Um, they and, also call it leave, um, yeah. And... and um, <laughs> And anyway, and, and they go to Seoul, right? So the capital of South mm-hmm. Korea. But Seoul looks incredibly like Saigon. <laughs> and, 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 and all the Koreans are wearing Vietnamese hats, right? And it's like, and so you go, what the fuck? It means to be in Korea. I'm, I'm, I must admit, I'm not culturally sophisticated enough to know all of that. So I just learned from you. So now I can point out all the flaws when I watch well, that actually, actually, <laughs> actually it, it should be actually said, I've actually, uh, I've actually seen um, interviews about that. And that was actually done on purpose because the reason was that when they filmed MASH, um, even mm-hmm. though the, the, the original story books, because I think there's three books that were written by the original Doctor, um, they were, of course... Um, uh, obviously set about his experiences in the Korean War. But when they made the movie, for political reasons, they wanted to change it to South Vietnam, but they couldn't because they sort of thought, uh, the war's still going on, it won't go down very well. I mean, mothers and fathers had their sons over there and stuff like that. So what they did was they turned Seoul into Saigon, but they still set it in South Korea. And it was meant to be their way of having their little statement about the war in South Vietnam. So there's a little bit of hmm. trivia for you. Okay. There yeah. you go. A little bit of trivia for you about MASH. When yeah. We're reviewing The Last Dragon. Even though we're I'm talking kidding. about The Last Dragon. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm only kidding. It was that hat <laughs> Leroy was wearing that mm-hmm. did that. Exactly. <laughs> it was yes. all Bruce that, Leroy's that adventure. <laughs> that, uh, so there's a scene in the movie. It is the most interactive movie theater that you will ever see. Now, <laughs> I have been to movie theaters where people are commenting and throwing popcorn at the screen. But, I mean, this theater, they were showing Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon. Everybody's quoting lines. It was like almost like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. People are dressed up. People are playing boom boxes and dancing in the aisles, interrupting (laughs) the the movie. (laughs) I was like, what is going on? Bruce Leroy was sitting there eating popcorn with chopsticks. chopsticks. (laughs) I know. And then... Yeah, and Show Enough shows up and interrupts the movie even more, and they're like, I'm going to kick your ass for interrupting the movie. I'm like, damn, everybody there was interrupting the movie. <laughs> show Enough should have just been background noise, but... Show yeah, Enough uh, up with and, his, his football shoulder pad. His shoulder pad. <laughs> shoulder pad game is strong. It really is. <laughs> to me, okay, Show Enough, one of our evil guys, he reminds me if... Eddie Murphy and Gene Simmons from Kiss had a baby. Yeah. That's what so enough looks like. <laughs> but but do, you, do you know what this movie actually reminded me a bit of? The Garbage what? Pale Kids. But this was good. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. The, the, the story was actually very similar. The, you know, the idea that you had these two evil people in two different directions and you had the good people who were trying to find their way and then they had to battle the evil people who joined together. It was sort of kind of like the same story. <laughs> but um, <laughs> No, you're right, though. I just, wow, I never would imagine the parallel, but you're totally right. Oh, it's amazing that, it's amazing that absolutely the lunacy that I can link together just for, you know. <laughs> Oh, no, this movie was amazing. It was the height of 80s fashion. I mean, wow. Any kind of clashing, colorful, mismatched, big hair, weird-ass accessory-wearing fashion that you could come up with in the 80s, they had it in this movie. I mean, we have a woman that has a fucking license plate on her ass, and she has headlights on her tits. I mean, it's it's just amazing. I don't know what the fuck was in that bin or that thing with the water in it that was eating. Oh my god, that giant aquarium! Oh yeah, yeah, what else was in that thing, man? I know. I thought okay, so like 
um, Eddie Arcadian, our evil music producer, wannabe music producer, um, evidently he's got a tough guy side to him. He's got kind of like a mafiosa side to him, so he's not above killing people. And evidently he's using this tank. I thought it was supposed to be piranhas at That's first, but then you realize – but there's one big creature in there. They, at one point What's they see, show piranha. something vaguely swimming. It's a um, mega piranha. <laughs> Oh, it was a mega was that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Sci-Fi made a movie, Mega Piranha. He just had one of the little <laughs> smaller ones. <laughs> he was the creator of the Mega Piranha. <laughs> okay, that answers that. Yes. <laughs> I wonder where sci-fi gets their ideas, right? <laughs> well, it's, yeah, this movie was just like nonstop visuals of just crazy shit. And somehow, like, there's not a really heavy plot to it, but I was so entertained the entire time. I was never bored. I was always amazed at what they were showing. They show the fucking hitmen. They're trying to hire a bunch of hitmen. The hitmen have resumes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, wow. Yeah. I like the, the three guys out front running their own fortune cookie shop that made up a dude who was the old guy who ran the shop because they thought their fortune cookies would sell better. <laughs> and they're standing on the street singing to their boombox lip syncing. Yeah. Not even good. But, Not even good dancing or good lip syncing. I was like, man, if I saw that on the street, I'd keep on walking. But everybody was gathering around like, yeah! Like, this is the best shit they ever saw. But and I'm like, well, you know, it was the 80s. We didn't have much else to do. <laughs> But what I want to know is why did Leroy think that the largest producer of fortune cookies in New York City, that would clearly be the martial arts master of the world? Oh, oh my God. Well, because because he made fortune market. cookies. I mean, <laughs> that was that was his evidence. Oh, he made right. fortune <laughs> cookies. His master told him to look for some dumb guy. Yeah. And that was the name of the guy that was running the fortune cookie shop. I mean, you, 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 you expect him, you know, if he was, didn't go there, where was he going to go next? Nestle? You know, I mean, <laughs> turn up at Arnott's Biscuit Factory? I mean, you know. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. We have to talk more about the martial arts right quick. That um, This is the noisiest, literally, the noisiest martial arts film I've ever seen. Every single person in this movie that's doing any kind of fight scene or martial arts practice, they're always going... Because everybody was being Bruce Lee. Yes. <laughs> everybody was imitating Bruce Lee. But even Bruce Lee didn't make that fucking much noise when he, in his movies. <laughs> it was just like, wow. It was just like all this hooping and hollering. And I was just like, wow, this is weird. <laughs> Sized into a whooper. A whooper. <laughs> oh my goodness! Okay, I actually so I, my daughter on WMEC Masters too. Um, Shannon Lee, she was on there. She came on to be host for a, for a few episodes, and she actually sang the song. Um, Kung Fu Fight. What is everybody's Kung Fu Fighting? What's the name of that? Yeah, yeah, you said it. Is it called that? Okay, that's what it's called. The show, which was great. You know, <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> but but that's as so cool as it has been pointed out, ridiculous. you've never seen as many grown people walking around kicking each other, making Bruce Lee noises. <laughs> oh or my goodness! Freezing. But but as, as as it has been pointed out in various memes that do the rounds of social media, it's probably very unlikely that everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> <laughs> We well, you know people so tend to overgeneralize. You know. Six billion people in the world simultaneously kung fu fighting. Damn, everybody's getting their ass kicked. Everybody's yeah, walking into the emergency room. To, they're walking into the emergency room to have their fucking shoulder reset from getting dislocated. And then the doctor just jump kicks them in the face. Like, because yeah. everybody's kung fu fighting. So, but. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sorry. Sorry, we have to stop the Formula One Grand Prix because the drivers want to kung fu <laughs> fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness okay oh no this has just gone too far <laughs> <laughs> my favorite character in the whole movie is angela Varocco. she is the one that <laughs> she, she is the one that 
she's kind of innocent in all this. She just wants to be a singer, dancer, you know, basically a pop star. And she's got this crazy Eddie Arcadian who's really pushing it. And he's really kind of living vicariously vicariously through her. He wants the power and attention that pop stars get. So instead of being one himself, because, well, let's face it, he doesn't have the look or the skills. He's going to force his girlfriend into it. And he makes her do these goofy ass videos. She's obviously modeled after a Cindy Lauper, who I love, 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 love love Cindy Lauper, love, love Cindy Lauper. And that video where she found porn under the bed, I'll let you guys, I'll let you guys talk about that. <laughs> I have to, so, oh, pardon me, I started coughing there. Um, I, uh, I have to admit that um, the, I actually preferred, I don't know what you guys think, I preferred her songs to Vanity songs. <laughs> yes. All I got to say is, I found porn under the bed. <laughs> you gotta go. You gotta go. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, Velvet actually has to has to leave. That was that was the safe word. Um, yeah, so, we, <laughs> um, so we, we, we say goodbye to Velvet. Um, she actually has to, uh, she's got a, another engagement she has to race off to. So, um, but don't worry, Velvet will, of course, be back um, next week. But the rest of us are still here uh, to finish off. <laughs> talking about this amazing movie um the, the, the other thing <laughs> oh no we're so we're the she's the lucky one not us <laughs> um i have to admit though do, do, do you find that um like in 80s movies um that the fashion is so over the top like it's it's far more over the top than it was in real life or is that just me did did because I grew up in a backwater of the world, you know, one of the shithole countries. Um, just, um, <laughs> did um, <laughs> did um, like? Did you find growing up in America that eighties fashion was really over the top? Or oh, oh Warren, it it, it, it was. It, um, let me tell you that I owned a, a shirt that was made of silver lame. So when I wore it, I looked like a giant Hershey's kiss. Right. It, it was over the top type of, of of a garment, you know. I think everything about the eighties was over the top. The hair, everything, especially if you were from Nashville, like I was, where all of the girls used a, an entire aerosol can of hairspray on their hair every morning to make it stand straight up in a wave on the front. Yeah, so. I think I think really think everyone unfortunately tried to emulate what they saw on the TV. Then I mean, from the uh, from the Michael Jackson jackets to the fact that kids were running around wearing one glove on their hand, a, a sparkly glove to to emulate Michael Jackson. It really was parachute pants with nylon and zipper pockets all over the place. I think we unfortunately yes, <laughs> the, the movie was, didn't really overblow the fashion at all, except for maybe showing up with his giant football giant shoulder pads. Shoulder pads. <laughs> shoulder That's pads. Sort of thing, but. Yeah, but other than that, no, I honestly think it was pretty on point with American 1980s fashion. <laughs> it's just, just I, I have to admit, like, my memories, because I spent so much time growing up at the beach, so I, I, I think I missed a lot of that growing up because my weekends and, and holidays were all spent, like, in coastal surf towns where the whole culture was totally different to what – the cities were doing, if you know what I mean, and I reckon I, I just missed a whole heap of it. Um, but it's it, it, it's interesting though, you know. You say that there's it's some, um, oh my god, I'm just so glad the eighties are over. That's all I can say. Oh, Do not bring I them back. I'm going to tell you how happy I am about that too, because it's honestly the eighties. Yeah, I absolutely love. The and 80s. that speaks volumes the, about you. Music, <laughs> I don't know. I love love the eighties. It's a great time. Well, it's it's, it's <laughs> it, those who weren't. Wearing the Michael Jackson clothes, the parachute pants. They were stuck in this other the transitional area of Aloha shirts and jams because they were trying to do the Magnum PI thing at the time. Oh as well. yes, yeah. Um, see, Magnum mm-hmm. PI is actually how I remember fashion. It, that, that which is yeah. really, really well, interesting. You know, that sort of like men wearing short shorts and um, yeah. Yeah. you know, and that sort of thing. I mean, that's actually more what I remember rather than the parachute pants and the you know, that other side of it sort of thing. Um, I and, get that too, because actually before I moved to Nashville, right before then, it was like right in the middle of the 80s, we lived um, in off an island down off the coast of Florida and my dad played music in a beach bar and it was it was definitely more that vibe than it was when we moved up to Nashville, which was more like, you know, that kind of crazy 80s over the top thing. 
So it was, yes. it was strange for me, but I experienced both sides of that. And I can tell you, I prefer Magnum P.I. <laughs> yes. I, oh, look, I loved that show. I, I, I would not go. That used to play here on a Sunday night, and that was – for me, that was like a religious experience, sitting down at 7.30 yeah. at night to watch the latest episode of Magnum P.I. I was, I mean, I, I was one of the, I was a kid that wanted, I desperately wanted to move to Hawaii and be part of the gang. You know, I was just, <laughs> I, I wanted to fly helicopters with TC and I wanted to, you know, go on stakeouts with Thomas Magnum. It's just, I, I just, that and yeah. Doctor Who, I just was so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I get that though, because my my dad was actually probably in his thirties at the time Magnum came out, and he totally thought he was Magnum PI. Like he he really felt like he was that guy. So, <laughs> yeah. but he had no Ferrari. He had no <laughs> Ferrari. No, 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 and less hair. But you know, other yeah. than that. <laughs> <laughs> but it is interesting that when we watch movies like um, The Last Trade and we see this fashion, which is so over the top. And how it dates, you know, so much now. You look at it now and it just, it dates so much. But when oh, you so look much. at movies, let's say, from the 1960s, I don't think the fashion dates. Like, it still looks normal. Does, does that make sense? Where stuff from the 80s is so out there that it just, it, it's kind of outside of the realm of what, especially like what millennials would sort of kind of understand. But that you could show them a movie from 1965 and they just say, oh, they're well-dressed people. Oh, you, you say that now, but, um, you know, I was out with my niece the other day and actually what's going on in her school. She's just about to turn 13. She's in seventh grade. And what she's telling me is that all of that stuff from the 80s that I can't stand, it's all coming back now in their schools. Oh, so really? The, the, yeah, they're putting French cuffs in their jeans. They're doing all the same kinds of things that we did in the 80s with our clothes. Mm -hmm. And they think it's cool. And I had to remember that everything comes around again, you know, for a while. You know, when I was in school in the 80s, we thought the 50s was the thing that you wanted to sometimes emulate, you know, or mm -hmm. different eras. And now what they're they're doing it with the 80s and it's horrifying. Yeah, during oh, the no. early 2000s, bell bottoms came back in. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. And, and the you know, the big platform shoes and stuff for oh a gosh, while. Yeah. And yeah. Well, yeah. Fortunately, not the fly collars and the silk shirts, though. Yeah, that, was, well. uh, that was bad. Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> who, who knows? They, they they might decide to remake The Last Dragon. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> That's a classic. You can't touch it. It's, yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, I love the, the show enough character. He was actually, uh, Julius Carey was actually in another television show that I really, really loved. Uh, back in the 90s, he was in The Adventures of Briscoe County, Jr. Oh, yeah, with Bruce oh. Campbell. With Bruce Campbell. Yeah. And he played a, played a character, a bounty hunter named Lord Bowler. And absolutely loved him in that. Um, loved Bruce Campbell, of course, as well. Uh, very entertaining if show. If you haven't seen that show, Warren, you'd probably enjoy it because it's spoofy and, and just kind of campy and fun. Of course, like anything Bruce Campbell does. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the one yeah, thing I probably enjoy it. Well, the one thing I have to admit is that um, there are so many American TV shows that I, have, I realize I've never seen, you know, because it's like they never came to Australia when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, um, it, it's like the very famous shows that you guys had, we got to see, but all of that, I don't know, probably 70% of your television, I never got to see. So there's oh often, like, you'll talk to people from America and they'll sort of, you'll be talking about something and they'll bring up all of this stuff and you're just, you're sitting there going, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but as Americans, we're we don't realize that or care that you don't know. Right. What, about. <laughs> yeah. what do you mean you haven't seen that? <laughs> well, <it's>, we're America. <laughs> haven't you seen everything about us? <laughs> well, it's, it's it's a little bit like I don't know if you if you've see you probably won't have noticed this, but um, um, I'll just say that we've we got to get back to the film. But the um, if you ever talk to somebody on social media that you've met for the first time, let's say. And uh, and when the question is, where are you from, right? Um, and someone from Australia says Australia. Someone from Britain says Britain. You know, someone from Canada says Canada. If you're from the United States, they tell you their state. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. They don't say <laughs> the United States. They say uh, California or they say mm -hmm. uh, North Lord. Dakota. You know, it's, it's really interesting. Or even worse, they give you the initials of the state. 
And you're going, what, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? Like, like where is, you know... <laughs> Like, where is Paul? Yeah, <laughs> no, where FL is. I know. Yes, it's it's really <laughs> quite interesting. It's really really quite interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. That's the arrogance of Americans. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. We say just that, assume no. you get it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that the isn't that the whole idea? The world wants to be American or something. Um, well, that's what we tell ourselves. <laughs> Well, Absolutely, there, American <laughs> exceptionalism. Well, there's, there, there is, there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, you, you look at how, I mean, America has influenced fashion so much. Um, I mean, you know, the, the standard Australian sort of weekend get around is jeans and a t shirt. Well, that's totally American, oh. you know? Oh, yeah, it definitely is, yeah. Um, Austra- <laughs> Australian kids wear baseball caps, but we don't play baseball. Oh, um, okay. You know, so it's, um, yeah, you know, so, yeah, no, it's interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, we have digressed so much. See, Velvet's not here to control me. This is the problem. I know, right? That's <laughs> she's, what... <laughs> she's, she's, she, she's, usually, she's usually there with a whip and a chair. <laughs> Down, Warren, on target. I heard that on about target. her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, no, I, I, I do digress so much when she's not around. So, anyway, so the Last Dragon. So, I mean, if we're going to sum it up and rate it, what what does what do we think on the Eric Roberts scale? Because um, it should actually be said too that this movie actually was a success. It actually doubled its money in in the box office. Um, I think it cost them ten million US to make, and it returned in the box office alone twenty five million. So it did okay. Um, but apparently, critically, it was not received very well, but the audiences liked it. Well, <laughs> well it's, a, it's a, a, once again another great popcorn movie. Um, and I guess, you know, seeing Vanity on screen was enough uh, for, for a lot of kids back in the, in the, in the 80s. I mean, she's, she was a prince protege, sort of, so that drove a lot of people to the theaters to see her. Um, I don't know. It, 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 terribly entertaining for my money, you know. Because um, it was free. Well, after, well yeah, yeah. That, that was basic cable free when I first saw it. Absolutely. Uh, but you know, put it on a scale. I mean, I guess I'm very generous with these things. Um, gosh, it's got it's for me. It's also got to be a five. Okay. Wow. wow. Absolutely. God, I love this thing. Wow. I, just, I feel like maybe you're just too easy. Uh, maybe I am. Maybe I'm just easily entertained. But you know, it's 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 the kind, like you said. It was kind. It's the kind of movie you throw popcorn at the screen. You enjoy the heck out of it. You talk to the screen if you were in the theater at the time. It was a lot of fun. I talked to the screen a lot during this film. I mostly said, "What the fuck is going on there?" <laughs> you know, yeah. what is wrong with that kid? And then Leroy locked that friend of his in the closet, like locked him in the cabinet with died. an actual padlock and just left. What if he had died when he was gone? His friend yes. would have died in the cabinet. I mean, overall, the film entertained the shit out of me. He it really did. He caught a bullet with his teeth. Yes. Yes. No. He did. Oh, with that's teeth. one thing we didn't discuss. Okay, honestly, the glow. Okay? The glow at the end. Oh, the, yes. We, we should explain that what happens is that um, our our main star um, is told by his master, so this is uh, Leroy is told, that when he finds true enlightenment, he will glow, like actually irradiate, look like he's yeah. swallowed some, I don't know, isotopes of some description. And, <laughs> I uh, don't and, know what's going on. And will actually physically glow. Now, when he's in the final fight um, with um, uh, Shonuff, oh. um, he's... Shonoff actually starts to glow red. And so we sort of are thinking, oh, hang on, is he actually the master? Is the master actually evil? It's like, only a master of evil, Darth. Um, is it, you know, <laughs> um, is, you know is, is it all gone wrong? And in fact, goodness will not triumph, but evil will triumph. Well, no, suddenly... Um, Leroy discovers his own glow because he realises... I don't want to actually give the ending away, but let's just oh, say he, he discovered... Oh, no, bugger it. It's from 1985. He, <laughs> <laughs> um, he discovers that he is his own master. And so basically, once he discovers that, he then glows 
And of course, he is then able to defeat the Shogun of Harlem. And that's how he realizes it because he realizes that he is his own master. So, yeah, the glowing fights and the sparks Whoa. when they hit each other. Kind of interesting. The animation was on point. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the glow was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, overall, just the whole thing was so utterly over the top and ridiculous. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to go with uh, with a 4.5 on this, honestly. I, I I really enjoyed it. It was good to see, um, you know, Julius Carey in the film as Shonuff, which um, I thought was, he was honestly my favorite character. But I love to see Ty Mock out there as the innocent Leroy Green. And with the clips from the music videos from the 80s, I mean, it, it really just came together as a complete package. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, One, I'm not sure, but a complete package. A complete package, <laughs> a complete package. something, package. man. <laughs> I, I must admit, it did take me back to being a, uh, a teenager when MTV first came to Australia. And yeah. we, we suddenly had, although our MTV, unlike yours, only ran for two hours one night a week. Oh, gosh. <laughs> typically that Austra- could have saved America if that had <laughs> happened. <laughs> typically Australian, you know. Um, and um, although, interestingly enough... It wasn't MTV that actually really broke music videos like VJs and that sort of stuff in Australia. It would actually be our government um, uh, TV network, the ABC, who started a show called Rage, which ran for, on Friday and Saturday nights, 12 hours straight overnight. Oh, and, wow. um, and it used to become a huge thing that, you know, people would go out or whatever and they'd come home and then they'd watch Rage. And, uh, and because it was on the ABC, it was uncensored. Because government TV okay. in Australia has no censorship, right? So they can play right. whatever they like. Um, so you would get all these video clips that you would never see on the commercial channels. Um, you know, because of lyrics or because of, you know, sort of nudity or because of violence or whatever. And uh, so it was absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah. So um, uh, anyway, oh. I was rating the movie, wasn't I? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was just trying to make the point that it took me back to, to my youth. Um, and because of that, I'm going to give it a four because it, it's, it's kind of a very simplistic movie but it's 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 kind of quite funny at the same time yeah. um the actual martial arts fighting i actually think is extremely good it's it's actually really really well done it's choreographed extremely well um and uh my only complaint is i think there wasn't enough of it actually i, I would have liked agree. to have seen more <laughs> martial arts actually uh so yeah i'm going to give it a 4 i think it was i think it was all right i think it was pretty good well, good. I'm glad we all Excellent. enjoyed watching yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, um, we should probably wind the show up here. It's been a short one. I mean, normally we actually go on for quite a bit longer than that. But um, as we said, Velvet actually had a previous engagement. Um, so... Um, uh, I want to thank you guys for coming on, uh, both uh, Tim and Irish. Thanks for coming back again. It was great having you on again. So much fun. <laughs> I really Absolutely. appreciate it. I really enjoyed it. And, and and thanks for the package. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Thanks for all. Oh, you know the what? The cookies were fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, all yes. that Australian, all those Australian goodies you sent us. Yeah. Well, I, I have yeah. not done the Vegemite. <laughs> yes. I, I, I should just explain. Um, we actually exchanged some uh, food items, and uh, <laughs> I sent, uh, I sent uh, uh, Tim and Irish some Australian goodies, and they mm-hmm. sent back some quite amazing sauces, I should have to say. Um, one of this um i actually burnt the roof of my mouth off oh um, I, I couldn't actually speak or i was i think i was on the floor holding my chest after having some oh, of it no. it was it was one of the hottest sources i think i'd ever actually um, um <laughs> ever actually Which had you to have a taste of america <laughs> yes no it was wonderful i i wonderful and and of course the, the other thing too is i have to thank you for is uh the signed copy of the Sheena comic book. Um, oh. That is actually currently behind glass. So thank you for that. <laughs> I, you are so welcome. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, that, you can enjoy it far more than I did. It was just in a, in a box that I had of, of a collection, and I know you were such a fan of, of Sheena. So absolutely, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Oh, yes. Well, I um, I, I actually have all the Sheena comic books um, going all the way back to, what is it, 1938? 
Um, oh, I've actually, I actually have them all. Although some of the very old ones, I don't have originals. I've got reprints um, because right. they'd just be impossible to, you know, touch. They fall apart and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've actually got the entire collection. Um, my Sheena collection is actually kind of ludicrous for a grown man. It's actually something that a 14 year old boy does. <laughs> oh, no. um, but you haven't seen Tim's comic book collection. Please yeah. don't beat yourself up. <laughs> well, well it, it's terrible. I mean, I've got the, I've got the original uh, TV series. I've got the TV series that you worked on. Um, um, Irish, the 2000 mm-hmm. to 2002. I've also got the movie. I've got all the comic books. Um, I've even got the Sheena doll. So it's pretty oh bad. <laughs> that's awesome. It's absolutely, absolutely oh, that's the, the Tanya bad. Roberts movie, the Sheena. Yeah, the Tanya Roberts yes. one, yeah. Yes. I love so, that one too. It was great. Yeah, <laughs> now, um, hanging on the wall somewhere, we've got the um, Gina Lee Nolan poster from Sheena. So that ah, one's... Ah, yes. So, yeah, that one's pretty cool too. So, but yeah, I still got all the, a lot of the props and stuff that, you know, you'll have a chance to see because we are using them in Legion of Rue. Oh, which so, is, yeah, up, absolutely, up absolutely wonderful that there is a Sheena collection, a oh, oh, connection, um, you know, to, to Legion of Legion of Rue. But the one thing I do have to admit is that, like, Tim, you were talking about the movie, that is still one of my favourite movies of all time. I just absolutely <laughs> love that film. And, um, and, the interesting thing is that it's um, the original TV series and then that movie, they always cast Sheena as, well, who Sheena's meant to be, but she had a broken, she spoke in broken English. You know, like her mm-hmm. English was never all that good, you know, for obvious reasons. But right. interestingly enough, when we get to Gina Lee Nolan, um, she sounds like she just <laughs> walked out of Los Angeles University. Um, well. Not many Africans have a Californian accent. No. But. <laughs> But you know what are you gonna do? I know. <laughs> I still, I still love it, and I watch the episodes regularly. So you know, <laughs> was that a Stephen Sears thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that was Stephen's show. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah. so, uh, um, do we have any any shout outs? Um, can we sort of addresses for Legion of Rue and so forth? Um, oh, the addresses and stuff. Yes. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. If people want um, to follow. So- yeah, absolutely. On Twitter, we are at Legion of Rue, and it's R U, so it's L E G I O N O F R U. And then it's also Legion of Rue.com, and we're also on Facebook, again, at Legion of Rue. Um, I haven't updated in a while because I've got new footage that I'm waiting to upload, so you guys can have some sneak peeks, but um, hopefully we'll have that up in the next couple of weeks. Oh, so. fa- fantastic. And uh, any other, yeah. I don't know, Twitter accounts or, I don't know, Anything you want to plug or shout out or? If you want to follow um, my personal Twitter account, which is mostly a lot of populist crap and personal pictures, um, that's <laughs> at the Irish Stewart, S-T-E-W-A-R-T. And um, if you like uh, progressive politics in America, you can follow me at, at Naked Axiom. Um, yeah, I say fuck a lot on that one. So, you know, be prepared. Uh, you're you're, you're yeah. becoming so Australian Irish. <laughs> uh, it's the Irish in me that tells uh, me to say Ah, yes. Right. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I, I'm saying a, a the, lot of lot of political stuff on at Simply Fluid on Twitter. Um, progressive Sith, that's kind of what I refer to myself as. I don't say fuck quite as much, but, you know, she's got the mouth for that. <laughs> that really sounded rude. <laughs> well, 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 it's, it's, it, there's, there's a great line from... Banana! <laughs> <laughs> it's, um... Do you, <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys... Do you guys ever watch... Um, have you guys ever watched Trailer Park Boys from Canada? No, no, I haven't even heard of that. Oh, it's it's actually. a TV show. It's been running for oh god, over ten years now, and uh, and it's got a whole heap of spin off shows um, as well. And in that, they're at they actually talk about swearing because there's so much swearing in it. And um, there's one where they're talking to the producers about doing the show, and uh, and they sort of say, no, now Canadian audiences aren't really quite used to all this swearing. You're going to have to cut it back, you know. So you've, you, you, they said you've got to follow what the rest of the world's doing. And then Mike Smith, who's one of the stars of it, he sort of goes, oh, for fuck's sake, have you never been to Australia or Ireland? They swear more than they speak. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I heard once that people who swore a lot actually had higher intelligence. So I just cuss a lot so that people will think I'm smart. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm there looking at go. pictures of these guys right now. I want to watch this Trailer show just from the boys, pictures. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, right. it's, readily av- it's readily available on Netflix. Um, so, yeah, check it out. You've, you've got a lot of back no. catalogue to get through, but trust me, it's a hilarious show. It's a very Canadian. It's that Canadian sense of humour. You know, which is a bit more, bit more very gr- polite humor. Well, it's, it's a bit more <laughs> polite with swearing. Um, it, it's um, <laughs> the, the best way I could describe it is it's you know like everything Canadian. It's sort of like it, it's very very similar to American humor, but it's got so many. It's influenced so much by British humor at the same time. So it's like it sits somewhere in between. It's a fantastic show. It. it yeah, I'll it really is. I probably love Ben because I oh, really yeah. enjoy British humor. So, and uh, you'll never, you'll, you'll never think about a rum and coke the same way again after you watch that show. That's all I will, or that's all I will just say. Um, so, uh, so anyway, um, yes. Now, of course, you can follow the show, um, of course, on Twitter uh, at Cult Movie Show. Very pretty easy, and uh, I don't need to give out all the iTunes and stuff like that because you're listening to the show, so you're obviously on iTunes. Um, so. Um, Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you to Velvet, of course, who had to run. Um, Velvet and I will, of course, be back next week. Um, thank you again, guys, for coming on the show again. It was real Thanks fun. Thanks for having us. <laughs> really, really <laughs> enjoyed it. Enjoy it. I loved it. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. And um, um, and uh, stick around because we'll, we'll have a, uh, a bit of a chat after we're off air. And um, uh, the other thing, too, is, as always, we will leave you with... Uh, Alana Evans and Perfect, who's kind of more known for being on CNN these days than for singing songs. But anyway, uh, we will leave you with Alana. So uh, cheers, guys, and uh, have a great day.